arthritic woman to believe that I, Mrs. Secord, lived through, walked through the fire and fury all those years ago, the years of the war. Now there sometimes comes a moment in a person's life where there's some revelation and an action or an accounting is called for. That is how I came to warn Lieutenant Fitzgibbon. Oh, I well remember the day those American officers invaded our home for the third time. Oh, there was a blistering heat spell that hung over Queenston that June. And as Captain Chapin came to the door, I hurried the children upstairs and prayed that the pounding would not disturb James. He was still convalescing, his leg and shoulder wounds not yet healed from the battle at Queenston Heights. And as I brought sustenance to the table, I overheard Chapin speak of his plan to capture Lieutenant Fitzgibbon's headquarters at Beaver Dams. <gasps> that bottle of wine nearly slipped from my hand. But I was invisible to them. You know how men's tongues get looser and looser as they drink. <laughs> oh. How I felt like Mrs. Dashwood in one of Miss Austin's novels, reduced to condition of visitor in my own home. Oh, they were vultures. Finally, the last of them stumbled off to the tavern for more. I hurried upstairs to James, grateful the children had made their own way to bed. And as I changed his bandages, I told James what I'd heard and how bold and brazen those Americans had been boasting and bragging as if they'd already won the war and taken over Upper Canada, as if doing us a favor. Suddenly James murmured, <coughs> Upper Canada must not be taken. Fitzgibbon must be warned. <gasps> I froze and this was the moment of revelation. I knew where I had to go and I knew what I had to do. James, I must go. There's no other way. James did not argue. Have you ever had that happen when you knew something, you just knew it, and there was no turning back? Laura, James said, you must go through the Black Swamp. It's the safest way to avoid the Americans. Ah, uh, yes, there was much to be afraid of. The quicksand, the soldiers, the native encampments. But... Somehow that fades now, the terror of it all. Why, it was the secrecy afterwards that was hardest to keep. It would have been devastating to have been called a traitor by the Americans back then. Oh, but to earn my due from the Prince of Wales all those many years later? Now that was some compensation. Though sadly my beloved James was no longer in this world. But still, there are those who wish to hear my story, and as God so decrees, I shall continue to tell it for as long as I am breathing. Naturally, in Niagara.